Okay, so last section in chapter 9 is section 7. This is dealing with the probability of multiple events. Now, as you notice, it's kind of changed. We've been dealing with rational functions for all this time, and now we're going to be dealing with uh, just a quick section of probability kind of thrown in there. So, probability of multiple events. So, starting off with probability, quick reminder, quick uh, refresher on what probability is. So, uh, what is the probability of rolling an even number on a six-sided die? So, a six-sided die has one through six. So, what's the probability of rolling an even number on a six-sided die? Hopefully, you're able to get that. That would be, there's three even numbers out of six total, which means it would end up being one-half or 0.5. Okay, and when you're dealing with these probabilities, usually we want to keep them as a decimal, so zero point something. Uh, the next one was the probability of pulling a queen out of a deck of cards. So you'd have to think or take a second, figure, see if you can figure out how, what's the probability of pulling a queen out of a deck of cards. So the first thing you'd want to do is figure out how many queens there are. Since there's four suits, that means there's four queens and there's 52 total cards. So uh, you'd end up dividing that, subtracting it down, and you end up with 1 over 13 or about 7.69%. And again, this would be theoretical. Okay, so experimental is that if we actually did it, theoretical would be what should happen. So, okay. All right, so now moving on from just that basic probability that we've done, now we've got to talk about the difference between an independent and a dependent event. So an independent event is an event is and independent events are events that do not affect each other. So if you have two different things going on, but they're not related in any way. So in this case, an example would be if you roll a cube and you flip a coin. Okay, Those don't have an effect on each other. Okay, Another thing would be if you roll just two separate dice. Okay, They don't have an effect on each other. So those would be independent events. Okay. Uh, a dependent event would be one that does have an effect. So the first one affects the second one. Okay. So an example of this could be like if you go into a garden and there's 10 different flowers and you pick one at random, and then you go out into the same garden and you pick another one at random. What ends up happening is that that second pick, one of the flowers have been removed, changing the probability of all the others. So if you go out there and there's, let's say, five five sunflowers and five roses, and you go out and you pick one at random, it's going to be 50-50. And let's say you pick a rose. Next time you go out there, now there's only four roses left, and there's only nine total, which means if the probability of picking another rose is not 50 anymore, it's down to four over nine, or 44%. Okay, So that is dependent events. The first one changes the odds of the second one. So you have to make sure you watch out to see if they're independent or dependent of each other. When you're dealing with independent events, it's very easy to find the probabilities. The probability of both events occurring, you just take the probability of each and multiply them. So if you want the probability of rolling a die and flipping a coin, if you want to roll a three and then flip a coin um, and get heads or whatever, you would just multiply the two probabilities together. So what's the probability of rolling a four on a die and then flipping heads with a coin? So take a second, find the probability of each one, and then you multiply them. Okay, so the probability of rolling a four on a die would end up being one out of six, and the probability of a heads would be one half, because it's either heads or tails. And now what you would do is you take both those numbers and you would multiply them together, getting you one over 12, which is about 0 0.08333333, okay? so. The probability of both those occurring is about 1 in 12 chance, okay? Because there's 12 possible outcomes that you could have, and there's only one that you're looking for. And that's what essentially probability is, because you can have six different numbers come up, and you have two different heads, so you multiply them together. Okay, so now mutually exclusive events. So if you have mutually exclusive events, um, that is if the two events cannot occur at the same time, okay? So if you have events that are mutually exclusive, they can't occur at the same time. So if we have, let's say, rolling a two or a three on a number die, if you roll a die, could you get a two and a three at the same time? No. So that means that they would be mutually exclusive, okay? You can't get them both at the same time. 
Now the next example, if you want to roll an even number or a multiple of 3, would that be mutually exclusive? No, it wouldn't be mutually exclusive because the number 6 fits both criteria. So if there's any situation that fit both of the criteria that are given, even, multiple of 3, um, odd or prime, you know, anything like that, if there's numbers that fit both criteria, those are not mutually exclusive. Okay, If they are mutually exclusive, there's nothing that can be similar with both. Okay, so if you have events that are mutually exclusive, so they can't both occur at the same time, the probability of A or B happening, so again, we are moving away from the and, so for both of them, so A or B, what's going to happen is that you take the probabilities and you add them together. So what's the probability of rolling a 2 or a 3? You take the probability of rolling a 2, 1 6, add it to the probability of rolling a 3, 1 6, gets you one third. Okay. That's if they're mutually exclusive. If they're not mutually exclusive, so if there is a part that's similar, what you have to do is you add the two probabilities together, so like what you did in the first one, but you have to subtract out the probability of both of them occurring. So in that example with the even number multiple of three, you would go probability of an even number, one half, probability of multiple of three, one third, because there's two, three and six. And then you have to subtract out how many, the probability of both of them occurring, which you'd have to subtract out one sixth, because there's one number that fits both criteria. Okay, so. <clears throat> About 53% of the college students are under the age of 25, and about 21% of college students are over the age of 34. What's the probability that a US college student chosen at random is under 25 or over 34? So first question, are these mutually exclusive, yes or no? That's right, they are mutually exclusive because you can't have, nobody's going to be 20, under 25 and over 34 at the same time. They can't be both. Uh, so now what we want to do is we want to find the probability of each. So take a second, find the probability of both these events occurring. All right, and all you have to do here is you're just adding them together. So 0 0.53 plus 0 0.21 added together gets you just short of 75% or 3 fourths. So it's about 0.74 would be the probability of randomly selecting someone between, under the age of 25 over the age of 34. Okay, so now we have this situation. We have a bowl of fruit that have the following. We have three red apples, two green apples, uh, two orange, one green lime, one yellow lemon. Okay, uh, what's the probability that a fruit is an apple or it's green? Okay, so we want to find the probability of it being an apple or green. So the first question is, are they mutually exclusive? And in this case, no, they're not because we have apples that are both apples and green. So the apples, the green apples end up fitting both criteria, which means these are not mutually exclusive. So what we have to do now is that we have to find the probability. So we're going to add up the probability of each occurring and then subtracting out the similar one. Okay. So here we take the probability of apples, there's five out of nine. The probability of it being green, it's three out of nine because we have the two green apples and the one green lime and then we subtract out the probability of it being both, which there was two, so two over nine. So five plus three minus two gets a six, leaves us with a two thirds or 0.667. And that's the probability of pulling a green or apple, apple or green fruit from that. All right, so this is our last section. This is section six, your homework is section six. Make sure you get that done.